All right. It's called me. Um, May 20th, 2019. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I obtain a motion to adopt the minutes of April 24th. Is there a motion? Motion. Uh, I'll second it, but should it say as, as manually correct. corrected? Sure. So somebody's got changed. Oh, did I miss somebody? All the somebody's are in there. Oh, I, Mr. Somebody and Mrs. Somebody. You no, know, I, 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 I sat there and I edited all that, and then I must not have put save on there or something. Because I, I did type it all in. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So there was a second? Your second? Yes. As amended, yes. As amended. As amended. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Actually, those were the May 6 minutes. So we just moved and adopted those. So I need a motion to adopt oh. April 24th. The special, special meeting. Special uh, meeting. I move adoption of the April 24th special meeting. Is there a second? Um, can I you second on there? there? You certainly can. Oh, were you there? No. Okay, I'll second it. I forgot you weren't there. Any further discussion? Mary, not move vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Oh, wait, no, never mind. Take that back. Okay. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Reacher? Yes. I'm a visitor. I came to see you. I called you and you never returned my phone. Out of order, sir. <laughs> I didn't know. It's not fine. That was enough. Close enough, y'all. You had a howdy error earlier, but shut up. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. Motion, I uh, need a motion to approve the payment of bills in the amount of $41,367.50, broken down general fund $7,783.78, fire fund $16,215.28, cemetery fund $561.68, EMS billing $11,251.17, road bridge $2,845.31, Capital project two thousand seven hundred ten dollars and twenty eight cents. Is there a motion? I move uh, to approve payment of these bills. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. I have one little piece of discussion. We okay. need to review Eamon's invoice. Uh, his labor charge doesn't add up. To his labor parts charge? No, to the to, to the charge for the labor. I mean, there's like seven or eight different categories of labor, and they're about $150 less than what he, what he put, got down for labor. So, here's that one. Uh, so, we'll give him a call. Okay. So, 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 Eamon's. So, everything is, but that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. That, that's under review. Well, I, uh, alter my motion. Seconding the revised motion. Mm -hmm. okay. No further discussion. May we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hoster? Yes. <clears throat> thank you. Marty, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk about two things. I'm wearing kind of a state of Ohio hat and also a federal government hat tonight. Uh, the state of Ohio hat is the new driver's license law that's in effect for Ohio. And I have a handout that talks about the two different kinds of licenses, mm -hmm. um, the uh, standard and the compliant one. Yes, please. Yeah. And um, I, I want to first say they're both the same cost. So, there's no, there shouldn't be a discrepancy there. But the compliant driver's license will get you into a federal building and also through TSA as you check in 
um, without an additional piece of identification. So if you get the standard driver's license, you go to check in for your flight and they'll ask for this. So they'll see that it doesn't have that little star on there, which means it's gone through a database and you'll need to show another piece of identification, which can be a birth certificate or a passport. Mm -hmm. If you just fly to Florida and you have a compliance, that's sufficient for, for, for everything. So the difference is what you need to show at, to get the driver's license. It used to be just take your old license in, maybe a birth certificate, but now they want to see your um, driver's license, old one that you're renewing, a birth certificate, a social security card, not just the copy, but the card, and two pre proofs of residency, which is just a utility bill and something, you know, anything that's mailed to you. And um, your birth certificate will show your date of birth. So it, it requires those documents. And the, the social security, um, basically one proof of residency for the, the standard license. So there's a little bit of difference, but if you're going to get the license, just get the compliant one. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just makes sense. Yeah. Um, now I will say that uh, effective October of 2020, which is about a year and a half mm -hmm. away, all of the driver's licenses will be this new format. Uh, if, if your license expires in, like mine does, in July of 2020, I'll be there, but if it doesn't expire until November 2020, you'll be getting it renewed anyway. They just passed this in Ohio about a year, year ago. So, uh, any questions on this? Yes, sir. If I have a passport, will that cover everything? Yes, okay. right. Yeah, Good. you'll need a passport, social security card, because there's no social security number on your passport, right. uh, proof of residency, and, um, and uh, your date of birth, of course, will be on your passport, but yes and your expired driver's license. The one difference... So it doesn't cover everything. No, it so doesn't. Not, doesn't cover not everything, but yeah, yeah. not a birth certificate. Yeah, okay. You don't have oh. to have that. You either or, but proof of your citizenship is paramount. So a passport will cover that. Okay. Now, I... I, I carry. No. <laughs> well, it's a photo ID, but that, that doesn't have uh, information on it either. When you walk out, you will not walk out with your new license. <laughs> They will give you a letter saying that you've renewed it, you get your old driver's license back, and if in fact you have to show your driver's license, you show them the old one plus the letter for two weeks. Mm -hmm. They're going to print all this out. For two weeks. Yeah. Pardon me? They're going to print it send us a letter. Well, they give you a letter when you renew it, your driver's license. I'm, I'm supposed to remember all this stuff. For well, two that's years. what this well, is. That's, that's what why this you have is. That. Oh, it's on the back? <laughs> no. Oh, it, here it is. Okay. Yeah, it gives you everything that you need. Does the passport need to be current? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, have you run into the question, um, and, and I heard this the very first time they talked about the driver's license, that some people in my family circumstance is my wife has nothing in her name, no utilities. So this proof of residence is going to be problematic for her unless we change Does she, those things. You know, like like my husband doesn't either. He, he had a um, stock portfolio notification, health care card that he got. Um, we took that. We took, um, I got mine. I had, I, I'm a quilter, so I had a membership in the quilt society. I mean, you know, so I had my membership <laughs> card. That was in my name to show that that was addressed to me. Oh. So it okay, so it didn't have to be utilities. It doesn't have to be utilities. Okay, it's just understand. anything mailed to you. Uh -huh. Like if you're on the board of the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company mm -hmm. and you get a, a program, then that would be that would be sufficient. Just something that's mailed to you at your residence. Okay, I understand that. That's okay. what they're trying to demonstrate. Yeah. That Chris lives at this address mm -hmm. and so, your wife lives at this address. I've been very careful to do everything through a post box. That can it be a problem? Mm -hmm. uh, it Ohio. might be. It might be because that's not how you vote. You vote for, you know, like your voter's registration card. I think is that. sufficient, and that wouldn't have a PO box. So, 
I'm sure I can find some. Now there there are <laughs> questions. You know, there's a website on there if you if you have questions. Either one lists the um, passport. As a well, document. your passport would be your birth certificate, your birth certificate in, uh, in lieu of a birth certificate that would uh, show oh. your full legal. Yeah, but name. it has to be a but the birth but the passport has to be Correct. up to date. Yes. Oh yeah, mine is. Yeah. And then your date of birth. So if you're, I have a passport, but it's not up to date, but I have my birth certificate. That's fine. I'll okay. just take that. Yeah, either or. But, and I don't really have to, de nobody really has to deal with this until it's time to renew. That's correct. Okay. Yes, we're not going to. Matthew McNellan, interrupting, so you don't have to write anything down. I don't want to do that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I did. <laughs> and I just have one more, one more. Um, the Social Security Administration has sent this through the Office of the Inspector General. It's a scam, and there is a telephone number posted um, on there that you can reach out and that you can call if to the OIG fraud hotline. This is a fraudulent call, and um, I will tell you that the toll-free number is a little bit difficult to get a hold of. People have had difficulty. If you're, if you're really persistent and have time to kind of wait, then do that. But the message that you need to kind of disperse throughout the community is that Social Security and IRS will never call you on the phone. No. And they will send everything in writing unless you have reached out personally to Social Security and you're expecting a call back from them. They will not call you. We call the attorney general too if we get frustrated. Well, you call this number, the fraud hotline. That. Yeah, yep. that's the number. Okay. Um, now, I will tell you that the gentleman that was 102 years old called oh. our office and said that the only reason he didn't give his social security number to the person calling on this fraud scam call was because he couldn't remember. <laughs> So I just want to say that the senior, senior population is the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get this to the senior housing centers and... and <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not senior, are you? No. But, oh, but senior well, citizens <laughs> get confused because they say your benefits are going to be impacted. We need to get your social security number just to verify. Mm -hmm. And it just scares me to death that people get confused. I mean, and, and so. Well, I just never learned my social security number. There you go. So. Well, the social security will never ask you for your social there it is security right there, number so online. <laughs> you could get your license. So. Well, thank you, Marty. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Well, and, uh, have a pleasant journey to Warren County. I will. I will. <laughs> you uh, headed to the Golden Lamb, are you? <laughs> no, I live in Warren County. Oh, I so see. I do not like 675 to, you know, I yeah. like the scenic crowd. I prefer the 42. 42. It's my favorite <laughs> route. 42 and 35, but, you know, they're it's the best. Nice. Yeah. So. How many miles a year do you drive? Oh, gosh. I have. Because I cover Fayette County too, mm -hmm. and that's always a hundred, you know, whenever mm -hmm. I go out there, which is probably once a week. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know David Stokes? Pardon me? Do you know David Stokes? He used to be the head of Solid Waste for Warren County, now she's already in Green County. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Okay, well, call Thank me at, at the Congressional Office. I wasn't there today, but I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. And we'll give you a call. If you didn't have any questions, you're in. Yes, yes. It's oh, 803. Yeah. <laughs> we would like a line item for a firehouse. Oh, well, they don't do a line items anymore. <laughs> but I'll put the word in. I'll, I'll uh, put that on my weekly report. That's what I hear. Do you guys, uh, have you heard any about that, that solar thing going through that oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. is it impacting Miami Township? Don and I went to a meeting on it last last Friday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There are a few hundred acres in Miami Township that are targeted. Supposedly they've got leases either recorded or unrecorded for just under two thousand acres. Two hundred or two thousand? Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. It is a lot. 
the problem <laughs> is that, you know, regulatory, once you have ag property, we talked about that, it's yep. not a whole lot you can do. Mm -hmm. Really, the only thing they're really the only thing they're missing now is is the, the full easement for the power line to okay. go to connect everything together to get. There's a few people that don't want to grant that easement through their property, but okay. they can, they're probably going to be able to figure that out. So who well, likes to use road right away? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but drainage may get complicated. Well, that's an issue too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't not need another little Miami River. <laughs> okay, you all have take, a nice evening. Take Thank you. you. All right, we'll return to the agenda. Um, correspondence briefly, I'll have time to the magazine, RPCC, RPCC Executive Committee meeting for tomorrow, MTFR conference call minutes from the 8th and the 15th. Uh, a quick question from Ally Construction about the RFQ uh, information. Um, who is it warned to? I want to know. The artist rendering of the Wise Kids Playhouse trailer, uh, OTA's May 17th legislative alert, Green County Road closure information, and there are a few Miami Township roads on there. You might just check them out. Uh, Bob Gower's retirement celebration open house next. Is it Wednesday? Did we decide? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, EPA Citizens Advisor about class B biosolid on construction in uh, Bath Township. Copies of letters dated 8th and uh, April 8th and May 10th. From Zone Inspector Soft is off uh, regarding the agrarian uh, property. Uh, I guess both of those went to Laura Perlis, I think. I'm not sure. Invitation for information sharing meeting about the solar farm. We just discussed that. Clifton Union Cemetery Basic Audit Report. You'll probably hear something about that in the other part of the meeting. Ohio Cemetery Association Newsletter, ICMA National Survey Request, Apple Farm Service. But local government appreciation days, every day's local government appreciation days. <laughs> status, revenue status, and preparation status for today. Any further correspondence? Okay, welcome to the Fire Department Report. We have no fire chief this evening. But the only couple of things that I had for uh, to, to report was I feel like we should put the uh, renewal levy on the ballot for the fire department in the spring, or not the spring, well, it's actually probably winter, March. I'm not sure it's technically spring or not, but because next year's primary will be early because it's a presidential year so uh, and it will also be a, a you know be a decent turnout for a, a foot level. Um, I don't think the schools are going to get their uh, construction program up to the point of you know going on the ballot quite by then uh, between uh, turnover superintendent and they're going to have to turn over a few positions uh, this fall for school board. So I think that would be a good time to do it. And I think we need to do it as a renewal and not a replacement. Uh, keep in mind, if we do it as a renewal, uh, we don't lose the Homestead uh, exemption funds that we would if we made it a replacement. Because remember, that was that was changed by the legislature a few years ago. That was one of Kasich's grand um, money cost saving deals, where if you changed it to replacement, then the state would not recoup that money that comes back to us. It's generally a replacement would indicate that you're going to ask for more money. Right. Yeah. And you said in March? Was it? I believe March. Well, the primary is in March, but we would have to file papers mm -hmm. in December, December, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's something we need to address this fall. And we probably ought to do it a couple months early in case there's errors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, probably last Monday. Get that fired up. Um, we had a, uh, a conference call last Wednesday. As, as I said, we didn't. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, participate in it, but I did get a report on it and some of the projects that I probably should have spoke up before, but I'll I'll go over those very briefly. 
uh, have been submitted for re-engineering and, and re-estimating um, costs so we can kind of run a priority, you know, a priority list of you know, how, much, how much we need to save and you know, how badly we want to. This is the new firehouse report. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, new firehouse report now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, how much we want to save and, uh, versus how, much, how badly we want to have Urinals in the bathroom. <laughs> Talk about cutting out. What can I say? It's a big item. What a big item. Yeah, that makes it a gender neutral bathroom. Yeah, and that's what we're going to end up doing. Um, so there's there's consideration of uh, quite a few smaller items, and briefly they are the uh, aforementioned urinals, different design of toilets. Um, changing the basic design of fixtures to a lower grade and adding more manufacturers for uh, competitive costs. Um, utilizing a residential as opposed to a commercial water softener, uh, reducing the width of the trench drains, that's the drains and the apparatus base that are spec at 12 inches and reduce them to uh, six. Uh, using uh, PEX when possible for, uh, for plumbing. Water lines, uh, potentially eliminating the commercial grade uh, grease um, fan in the in the kitchen to a residential, uh, but it's a mighty fancy residential, but still it would be less expensive. Um, a different kind of construction for the for the storm shelter that's now being moved, as you recall, from the inside of the building to the back of the building where the uh, fitness room and water room would be. Uh, use a color complementary colored brick instead of the cast stone along the perimeter of the, the base of the building. Uh, we're going to reduce the building. None of these things are going to be done. These are all potential. These are things that have been uh, thought that they could save money. And so we're going to look at the possibility of doing these, and then when we know how much it's going to be, see we'll reduce the height of the building by two foot, two feet, all the way around. Um, eliminate the thin brick on the parapet. Uh, reduce load-bearing masonry. El eliminate the tall parapets over the storm shelter. Um, we can bring those down to approximately four feet from, from seven feet. Um, change the uh, heating and air conditioning system from a single unit uh, with a, a boiler and uh, 13 different uh, 13 different what do they call this zones yeah 13 different zones in the building to to five individual um, furnaces and and five zones. Um, we can't reduce the fire, we can't remove the fire pump now, we just said that. Um, small things, we're going to eliminate some in inverters on the uh, exterior lighting and change one of the pole lights. Uh, we're going to reduce the paving, they're not going to take, a, not going to take an additional um, um, access to Marshall Street that we had, we're going to remove that and uh, go from somewhere, go from the uh, thickness of, of the concrete uh, on, the, on the apron from 10 inches to, 10 inches to 8. Uh, because we're not going to do the roof monitors because of the price, the skylight gizmos, uh, there's a lot of expensive structure inside the building meant to support those up in the you know up in the roof and the ceiling and so that can all be eliminated and just put um, basically pre-made metal trusses in its in its place um, <laughs> um, specify an additional overhead door manufacturer uh, the man from WDC Jason Funberg had made a, uh, a request for a quote from 
one of the suppliers he uses a lot, and his quote came in approximately half the price of uh, what the uh, MSA estimator had. It was MSA estimated at 98,000, and this company supplied was going to supply it for 50, 52,000. So anyway, uh, when we get those numbers, and uh, as I say, I just don't think we're going to get those by Wednesday, but I'll check tomorrow and see if they're going to have enough to make it worthwhile to meet. Um, so, anything else for the new firehouse? Nope. I had an exciting idea about the groundbreaking, but I'm going to have to wait until Colin gets here so he doesn't miss out on the excitement. I don't think there's anything else. That's um, everything, yeah. I went to an interesting, uh, an interesting meeting sponsored by the Chamber last week on social media policy. And as we've experienced in the last few months about social media, uh, there's some questions that I would like to put to the chief about their social media policy and their social media, media policy training that they have. Uh, he said they have it in-house, so I was going to ask him what it was uh, consisted of. Cemetery Road. Um, Cemetery Road administrator is not with us this evening. I did talk to him earlier, and he reported that uh, they had one internment of a set of ashes last week. And other than doing a lot of weeding in Clifton Cemetery, uh, and we'll mow it tomorrow, or start to mow it tomorrow, until it takes a day and a half. It'll be ready for Memorial Day. Uh, the band, I guess, is tuning up. <laughs> Would you do anything? Yeah, yeah, just close it all the way. I have one question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> this is probably detailed in the engineer report. It was uh, in correspondence, but how long is the Grinnell Road Bridge scheduled to be closed? A week. Uh, a week? I think it's just a week. Is it just one? Well, I know they, they reopen every day at three. So it's closed in the morning, and then it's open by 3 o'clock, because that's the work day. But I think it is in there. Um, I think it was just a week. You know, it's, it would help to publish something, maybe get that in the newspaper. Right. Well, by then, it's going to be about over. So I think it's just a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll hit, you know, it'll be, be in the paper Thursday, and it's, well, it's over on Friday, I think. Well, I got a call complaining about it. <laughs> no, because they didn't know about it. Your trailer. The other road closures were, um, they, they weren't talking about this one, the, the one at the Grinnell one. The one what you're looking at today's correspondence. It was from, one for um, Cedarville. North Force, yeah, North Force Clifton River, wasn't it? Yeah, and um, hang on, whatever. Was that other ones? That was other ones. Well, I'll look it up. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, fist bump. Um, I have no report. <laughs> okay. Um, will you have a report on uh, the change in our revenues? Sure. Why not? Okay. Well, um, the change in the revenues. Uh, as um, Chairperson and Mutual had requested that I look at the, our revenues um, numbers expected for this year for the fire department, and um, he was suspect of one line item individual in particular, which totaled um, sixty-seven thousand dollars, and um, I had a conversation, a couple conversations with the uh, county auditor's office, and and. Mr. Mutcher was correct in that that was not the correct number. And um, so we reduced the um, 
expected re revenues for um, 2019 by $60,000. But uh, the good news is we're still um, in the bank. So, um, but that's been corrected and it's, it's reflected on the revenue status uh, report for this meeting. Uh, would you remind me of the exact number? It was 2191, the fire department, and then it was the, no, bot the bottom line, the re other revenue status report. It's like, yeah, that short page. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very last line. Page three. Yeah. It did. It used to say sixty-seven five hundred, and you can see then the other the other line item, other gov intergovernmental was sixty-seven two fifty, and so that kind of um, was the the red flag. There was two sixty-sevens in there. <laughs> um, anyway, it's now it's just sixty-seven. It just now it just says seven thousand five hundred. The bottom line in twenty-one ninety-one as far as a resource. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the change that was made. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and I guess, um, Don, I want maybe you want to mention the that the cemetery, Clifton Cemetery, had was audited. Under cemetery report. All right. Or, uh, down to under, under just, I mean, that's pretty much the report. To be standing committees, how's that? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, are we now on standing <laughs> committees? Are yeah. skipping all the others? <laughs> no. No. Well, okay. you, yeah, you no, never yeah. went to MBRPC, uh, so I, you can have the floor for a clip. The, uh, well, it really almost wasn't an audit report. Everything was fine except it was so many days past the date. Right, and, and, and I had a really good reason for that. <laughs> uh, it, it was, uh, so the wording of the letter was uh, along the lines of, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, like there was no real threat or... or I, I, did, I did ask the auditor, um, the person who came in to audit, you know, mm -hmm. what that meant and if there was a fine for that late filing. And he said, sometimes, he goes, generally he said they just wait. So, I mean, but it hasn't been actually posted, you know, officially with the state, so we're not out of the woods yet, so to speak, but he said basically it's, well, he, yeah, that's what he said. I, but, I was know. startled that the auditor's office audits um, small cemeteries. Very small. Yeah, I know. It was, yeah. it, it, it took him about, yeah, it took him, um, Probably two hours tops. And it's, uh, I mean, to me, it's technically not a government. It's, it's an independent, I mean, so is, is, for instance, the Grinnell Cemetery on? Is, uh, well, Glen Forest is just as a, as a routine. It's part of, it's part of, part of the, our audit. I mean, yeah. it's part of the total I mean, audit. I mean, nonprofit organizations can pay an auditor but it's a private auditor. Well, but we, we you know, but the church was cemetery. responsible for um, Clifton Cemetery, partially. And so we, you know, we pay money, we pay salaries, and, um, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm learning. Yeah. I have a question probably, Paul, but am I allowed to speak now, or should I wait till the end of it? Um, technically, you're never allowed to speak. <laughs> no. But yeah. if you'd like to, this is regarding the cemetery. I think, yes. the, I think exactly. the board would uh, uh, allow it for your question. My dad uh, and mom were uh, to be buried in Clifton Cemetery. Mm -hmm. My mom remarried. She's her remains are in Clark County. So I've got a plot, and I would like some kind of letter uh, saying that we are aware this is now the property of Matthew McNally. Well, you'd have you have to mean, take that out with the, the Clifton Cemetery board. You want the, the name, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, name yeah. on the deed changed? Is that what you're saying? Right, yeah. Well, I'll look into it. Yeah. You, you've mentioned this, but you've I, never yeah. mentioned it that way. Well, you and, just and, said and, you want a confirmation. That you want yeah, I want confirmation, but that's mm -hmm. the kind of confirmation I'm looking for. Okay. Because well, if I don't use it, then niece and nephew and you know, whatever and whoever, because mm -hmm. uh, dear old dad's laying there all by himself. How do you spell your last name, please? M C N E M E N E. Oh, N E. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like Kelly, only with an N. Oh, Nelly. Yeah. McNelly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Two T's and Nancy. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> Did you have anything? Um, nothing else on the uh, secretary. Okay. Would you add the Green County uh, Complete Census Committee to the standing committee reports? Because it's going to it's going to be active for the next Green year County. plus year and a half. Did you maybe. say Complete Census? Complete Census Committee. Okay. Which will have its first meeting. Has oh, yeah. somebody been appointed to that? Don has. Okay. Well then. Mark, did you attend any Economic Sustainability Commission meetings? No, I did not. Okay. Any senior citizen projects or meetings regarding that? Um, the senior housing project was denied. Um, Emily says uh, that she's still optimistic, uh, waiting for to uh, see what the new criteria is. And uh, we scored uh, quite highly. I, I believe that our score is a perfect score. You can't get any better than that. Yeah. So why was it turned down? Um, I'm assuming that they just ran out of resources. Well, that's a good reason then. <laughs> you don't have the money. Yeah. Huh. Well, why is next time something? Mm -hmm. um, they said in the paper that they would just reapply. Mm -hmm. I don't think. As I said, we didn't meet with MERPC and the regional planning is tomorrow. Um, the mill, I've asked for a uh, estimate to, to seal coat the roof, to silver coat it, I guess they call that, and I haven't received that yet, so um, that's coming up. So, any new business? Any old business? It's so quiet in here. <laughs> It told me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't get quiet, did it? I would then entertain a motion to adjourn. Not in record time, but I, I so move. I'll okay. second. Move and second. To the official. So now I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> still, <laughs> still, <laughs> still, <laughs> still, 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 still